Formnax 2024, and I'm here with my new friend, Turbo. <laughs> Come here. This is Dr. Tao, mm -hmm. and he is the CEO of Bamboo Lab. Yes. And an all-around incredible human. We're here playing with some of the kits that Bamboo Lab has to offer, and I want to kind of concentrate on this. Mm -hmm. But while we talk about this, let's talk about some other cool stuff. And one of the things I want to ask and make sure the audience knows about, why did I call you Turbo? Where did that come from? Oh, that's a good question. It's not a turbocharger turbo, it's a turbulence <laughs> part of turbo. Because, because I study turbulence, you know, large eddy simulation. Somebody know what I'm talking about. That's <laughs> yeah. extra nerdy. Yes. You know, it's no. not like it's not like the turbocharger on my car. No. It's the one it's, level higher. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know there's a lot going on here, but I, I think one of the interesting things and one of the really cool draws of this amazing bamboo lab booth mm -hmm. are these RC kits. Yes. Tell me a little bit about that. How did you guys come about coming up with RC kits. Think about how should we decorate our booth and uh, why not just showcase what the printers can do. That's and, fair. Uh, we have brilliant creators you know, who design all kinds of brilliant things. I do like that. I mean, there is the castle. We've got the crane set. Mm -hmm. So the, the crane is an official kit. It will be. It will be, yes. right? If you don't sell this, a lot of people are going to be really upset because I this, is, this is incredible. Yeah. This play set next to us did, did someone come and design this specifically for you, the Form Next booth? I think for some part, yes. For some, no. We I think we have a list. You know, we attribute all the creators who contribute to this project. Well, Houses, well, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we that list. We'll put it down below. Okay. One of the other things, that incredible rainbow multi-board. Yes. How That's cool is that? Right? That is, yeah. and it's all printed. How many hours of printing was that? Do you know? To be honest, I don't know because they use many printers. So it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> that Actually, printers. that's one of the cool things. Yeah. And, and another thing I wanted to bring up with you is that we're finding that a lot of people now, more so than ever before, mm -hmm. are able to start themselves a business using Bamboo Lab product. Yeah. And even one printer gets them going. But I've, I know a number of people who bought one, and that then too. they bought another, yeah. and then they end up with five. Uh -huh. There's someone in Washington State who does a lot of little minis. He yeah. sells them. And I think he's just got walls of Bamboo Lab printers printing these minis 24-7. Yeah. As the CEO of the company, how does that make you feel? Like, that's got to be a good feeling, right? It makes us feel way better, you know, enable other people to have a very successful business instead of just, you know, selling printers. Sure. So, I think every time when the team heard about stories about somebody in a remote place in the, in, on this planet or in a big city, they can have very success, successful business by using 3D printers. But I think the whole team gets recharged with motivation, you know? <laughs> a lot of times when people think of Bamboo Lab and the features that are happening, I know that your printers run as a closed source ecosystem. Mm -hmm. And so I know we can't peek under the covers of the code, but could we peek under the covers of kind of how you derive the code and the user experience? Yes. The most important step is you mind simulate what people will do in front of, in front of the printer. I think that's the most important part. Uh, after we have the initial design of the UX and software, we will do some simple tests and grab someone randomly from the company. Ideally, not, not someone experienced with 3D printing. Hey, this is the thing, please use it. And uh, we'll try to observe him or her, you know, what kind of problem does she or, or he encounter and what blocked him. And uh, if we find something, then we try a different way to okay. do so. And that yeah. actually kind of leads me to the, the next kind of thing that I wanted to talk about was your experience within 3D printing. Uh -huh. um, when Bamboo Lab hit the market, it was huge. I like to tell people that Bamboo Lab drew a line in the sand uh -huh. that established the next generation of machines. I think that everybody tried to bring about high speed clipper machines for a general audience, but the consensus was, at the time, it wasn't something easy for a company to, to warranty and support and put together for a user, a user experience. So then, when Bamboo Lab dropped, you had, you had that high-speed machine, and you, you had that software, and you had that user flow. What personal experience did you bring to the company with 3D printing in order to help enable that? An initial team, the core team, the, the first people of the company, they are veterans from the consumer electronics. So we have a standard how a product should be. I mean, if it's below the standard, they will, they will not tolerate themselves. So. <laughs> well, everybody, the first 10 were from DJI, correct? Yes. And uh, I know DJI as being something that is, as a drone company, uh, it is a complex thing, but it's made easy to operate. Yeah. 
easier than, much easier than other drones and drone softwares that I've used. And so does the, the work that you did there easily transfer to work within Additive? Not necessarily, but I think the standard, the mindset. Unfortunately, I turned my hobby into my job. It's, it was fun for the first four, five, six years. So we have to find another hobby to turn it into a job. <laughs> Wait, turn, turn, turning your hobby into your job, it doesn't, after four, five, six, okay. My, I mean, my time's <laughs> almost up. Uh, it's been fun. We had a good run. I have my first 3D printer, not my, our first 3D printer in DJI in 2013, I guess. Oh, yeah. really early on? Macbot. Which one? Was, oh, it was a MakerBot? MakerBot replicator. Yeah. Oh, yeah. you had a replicator. Yes. Really? Yes. From time to time, we revisit 3D printing. We do prototyping, we make some toys, and then in 2020, we say, yes, we can do something about that. What was it like starting at ground zero for Bamboo Lab? What, what was the first steps you took in order to create what we all know happened today? We watched lots of videos, lots of your videos, you know? <laughs> That's the best part. Honored. And you go through Reddit, Facebook, you know, you just observe what people are talking what kind of trouble they have. They have a fix my print subreddit. That's, oh, uh, they do, yeah. That, that's yeah, a very do. precious information for us. <laughs> so I remember when I first got the email for Bamboo Lab uh -huh. and talking about, you know, as a 3D printing person on YouTube that does reviews, wondering if I wanted it. And it felt like spam at the time. It really felt like spam because it was making some enormous claims uh -huh like LiDAR and, and microprocessing and the ability to diagnose print failures. And I was like, wait a minute. I sent right? out 10 emails personally to, in, to you know, all kinds of YouTubers. I think I received one or two replies. <laughs> Everybody thought I was a liar. <laughs> But you can see why, because at the time, uh -huh. it felt like outlandish claims. I mean, especially I, for Kickstart project. Especially that. But I mean, you obviously were able to develop the features and get it there. Uh, early on, though, you did choose Kickstarter as a platform to launch on. I think Kickstarter had all the spirit for a startup. I think that's the right way to use Kickstarter, right? A startup try to get funding, I agree. attention from the audience. So why not? Let's go to Kickstarter. During the preheating, they get very little attention and very little traffic. And people, we were very worried. Like, really? Will it be a very successful Kickstarter? You know, some people warn us, you have only this number of subscriptions. You can sell 40 printers to be lucky. You sold a lot more than that. Yes. I think something like a million printers. A million? Yeah. A million yeah. 3D printers out into the world for people to use. Wow. Uh, one of the tenants that you guys talked about early on was no more bed slingers, mm -hmm. if I remember right. And then one of the next offerings of Bamboo Lab was an A1 Mini, yeah. a bed slinger. Yes. How did you as a company come about creating the bed slinger after saying no more bed slingers? I mean, when we developed X1C, we have some misunderstandings about bed slingers. And it's boring, right? Everybody <laughs> have best thing. We don't want best thing. We want to be something sure, special. Sure. So yeah. that's why I have I can see. But after that, you know, we have done some research, you know, homework. See, best thing has its advantages. It can be very affordable. You know, the package can be small if, if people can assemble them. And it can be a very ideal entry level printer for someone who have never done 3D printing. It can okay. be very inviting. And why not? Yeah. Sure. We were wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I forgive you. Yeah. Well, and I'm glad that you guys took that stance because the A1 Mini is a, is a wonderful machine. Yeah. I have it, I've used it, and I've gifted many to friends. Mm -hmm. And then next you came out with the A1. Yeah. Uh, and I've used that. I do love it. And I've given that to friends. In fact, I posted on LinkedIn, my banker, someone who handles the uh -huh. money for my business, I brought him to the studio and I gave him an A1 cool. to take home yeah. to his kids because he had another printer that was hard to use, didn't work all the way, <laughs> failed at times. And so I thought this is the perfect opportunity to give someone a really premium 3D, 3D printing experience. I mean, that's the whole idea of A1. We want it to be inviting. You know, we want a bigger community. We want people who were scared of doing 3D printing feel that, wow, well, that's the experience. I want to be part of the 3D printing community. Do you have a printer yourself at home? Yes, FX1C at home, yeah. Okay. I just received a notification. 
So some print is finished at home. <laughs> Somebody is using my 3D printing. Uh, with the, the A1 Mini, uh -huh. and then the A1, and then people are clamoring, uh -huh. clamoring for a uh -huh. machine. They want a larger bamboo. Yes. They, want a, they want this next generation of bamboo. They want, they're, they're, they're just hungry. They're excited. And then you had to push the release a little bit later. I'm not going to prognosticate about anything, but, but in the spirit of being a little bit more open, I'd love to ask you, what are some printer technologies that you're a fan of? Or are there any features or functionality that you think could use some updates in the, fuse, in the future? I think the whole 3D printer yeah, yeah, yeah. could use some good updates. The whole one? Yeah, the everything. Whole yeah. Not necessarily for the next generation, okay? It, we have time to do it, probably. <laughs> <laughs> big, for sure. Yeah. And everybody cry for a big printer. I mean, go big is actually easy. Now, we don't want to just simply go big. We want to go big and something. Oh. Keep tuned. I oh. cannot tell you anymore, sorry. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's really cool that when we talked about the bed slingers and talking about them being more uh, more aimed towards entry-level users. Yeah. You said you were wrong about them, and I love that you've developed it. One of the most amazing things that I've seen is you're able to price your machines absurdly low. People are able to get the A1 Mini for under $200. Mm -hmm. So less than $200 for a 180 cubed build volume, the ability to go multicolor, and the Bamboo Lab UX. Yeah. And the A1 itself, also on sale on TikTok shop for a very low price. Yes. How are you able to pack so much technology into something that doesn't cost as much? We are cheap because, <laughs> I mean, that's a joke, okay? <laughs> if you know that technology, use the right components and do it properly, you can have a premium product with a controlled cost. We use our in-house build sensors, for example, piezo, you no? Know, a piezo sensor can be very cheap if you know how to properly calibrate it, you know, install it, and uh, write the right algorithm to use it. So you're, you're saying you're able to get some, you're able to price at where you're at because you're able to better take advantage of the components yes, you're choosing. because we can do it. Not because we are cheap, no, not because we <laughs> buy cheap components, no. I think all the components from them print are premium components. Just we use the right one to get the job done. Do you think you'd be able to accomplish what you've done if you weren't in China? I think for parts, for the design parts, for sure. For the manufacturing parts, I think parts of it can be done. Mm -hmm. And of course, we have supply chain advantages. Yeah. You, know, you can find the right suppliers next door. So that's I, yeah, a, Shenzhen is a, is a wonderful area yes. that has everything you could possibly want to build anything electronic, yeah. right? People think Shenzhen is cheap. Actually, Shenzhen, the supply chain in Shenzhen is expensive. So is that's a really? misunderstanding. Yeah. Okay. It's expensive man, than many other uh, cities and even countries. But it's premium. You can find the right one. You order a million of them, then you can get a good price. And that's what you can do. I mean, yes. if you're selling a million printers, I mean, you can obviously order a higher quality or high quantity things, yeah. right? Uh, one of the things that I want to touch on, and I know we can't get into specifics, the next administration in the United States has proposed possible tariffs with China. Uh -huh. And I know with Bamboo Lab, you have low cost machines, not cheap machines, but low cost machines. Is there anything that you've taken into account so far in case these tariffs go into play? Yeah, that will be a challenge. And we are looking into it. But uh, at the moment, we don't have a, a very good answer to that. Okay. You know, if you have anything, tell me, okay? Believe me, if I had an answer, I'd let you know. No idea. I'm excited to talk to you because I think that Bamboo Lab has really made a place for them within 3D printing. And I think it's been in a very short amount of time. I think that you've challenged others who've had established places, and, and in challenging, you've had others answer the call. Because if you go around here at Formnext, there's a number of enclosed Core XY machines that offer similar build volumes and on some machines I've seen almost the same UI on the screen. Yeah. Well, it has been two and a half years since we released X1C, we tell ourselves, well, it's about time. You now it's about time to release the next generation. So that's the plan. We don't expect you to be the leading company if you have one generation of very good printer and then you sleep on it, right? Right. Do you ever envision 
a Bamboo Lab future that embraces open source a little bit more? I think we have open source components you know, here and there. Yeah. yeah. But in general, we really embrace open source spirit. But we have to find a balance between the sustainability of the business and contribution to the community. Yeah, we are trying to find the balance. But definitely we will have open source it's, it's a tough balance, yeah. obviously. Yeah. Have you found yourself ever just sitting down and kind of realizing everything that's happened in the last three years that Bamboo Lab has accomplished? Most of the time, we were too busy you know, to take that moment. But I think Formnax is a very good opportunity. You, when you stand here, you have customers, designers, community members come to you, talk to you. I think that's the moment you realize what you have done. And that's the moment we recharge ourselves with motivations. You know? One of the things that I noticed here at Formnext, the, the Bamboo Lab booth, I mean, if we look around, it's fun. Yes. I'm going to tell you, like, I think fun has been missing from a lot of the industrial shows. If you visit our office, you find printers you know, on the desktop. And they are all printing funny parts. You know, they are not printing 3D printer parts. They are printing some toys for themselves. That's the spirit of Bamboo Lab. One more question. I know we're kind of running short on time and a lot of people want to visit the booth and we're kind of holding them back. Let's take the next 12 months into consideration and we're back at Formnext and it's Formnext 2025. What do you envision the Bamboo Lab booth looks like? It will be packed with people looking at a new product. I promise you that. <laughs> and this year, if you walk around, you see many printers resemble those ones. But next year, there will be a leap, okay? We will have the difference between products again. And there some people have homework to do next year. Really? Yes. Can't wait! I know, I, I know you're not going to tell me anything, so I'm not even going to try, but it's really exciting that we got a little peek into it, and I really want to thank you for this mm -hmm. wonderful chat. Before we go, look at the camera right there and tell everybody where they can go to find out more about what Bamboo Lab offers. Okay, come to our website, bamboolab.com. You cannot miss it. Yeah, <laughs> if you want all this splendid thing, go to makeworld.com. There we go. You find you know, creative stuff, good stuff for free. And go to Joe Tedding's you know, YouTube channel. He will get a, a printer you know, for next year and I'm sure he will oh, show it oh, to yeah. everybody. Okay, yeah. okay, this is Pinky Swear. Yeah. Okay, okay, it's said. Well, listen, uh, thanks for making this far in this great little chat. If you did, you're awesome. Don't forget to hug each other more, fight for cause you believe in, 3D print all the things. Yeah, okay, and as always, high five. Going? Oh, oh.